In this lecture, we will discuss the Kafka architecture. Kafka's architecture is designed to handle massive amounts of data with very high speed, very low latency and strong fault tolerance. To understand how Kafka works, let's walk through the entire flow using the diagram you are seeing right now. At the top, you see multiple producers. A producer is any application that sends data into Kafka. This could be a microservice publishing orders, a payment service sending transactions, a logging system pushing logs, or even IoT devices generating events. All these producers send their messages into the Kafka cluster, the central part of the architecture. Now let's focus on this Kafka cluster. A Kafka cluster is made of multiple servers called brokers. Each broker stores data, handles requests, and works together with other brokers to distribute the load. Inside the cluster, you see multiple topics. A topic is a logical category where messages are stored. If different producers send different types of data, they send them to different topics. For example, order events go to an orders topic, payment events go to a payments topic, and user activity goes to an activity topic. Now look inside each topic. Every topic is divided into partitions. This is one of Kafka's most important design ideas. A partition is an ordered list of messages stored on disk in sequence. Each message inside a partition has a unique offset that never changes. Kafka uses partitions to scale horizontally. Instead of storing all messages in one place, Kafka splits them into multiple partitions that can be stored on different brokers. This means more speed, more parallelism, and more fault tolerance. Now look again at the diagram. You can clearly see three topics, each having its own set of partitions. Each partition is handled by Kafka as an independent ordered log. To improve reliability, Kafka can also replicate partitions across multiple brokers. One copy acts as the leader and the others act as followers. If the leader fails, Kafka automatically promotes a follower to keep the system running. This gives Kafka strong fault tolerance. Now let's move to the bottom of the diagram. Here you see consumers. A consumer is any application that reads data from Kafka. A consumer doesn't read from an entire topic at once. It reads from specific partitions of that topic. If there is only one consumer, it reads every partition. But if there are multiple consumers in the same consumer group, Kafka divides the partitions among them. This allows multiple consumers to process data in parallel without reading the same message twice. Inside a consumer group, each partition is assigned to only one consumer. Consumer group 1 might be doing real-time processing. Consumer group 2 might be doing analytics. Both groups get their own view of the data independently. So when you look at the entire architecture from top to bottom, you can see how the flow works. Producers send messages into the cluster. Kafka stores them inside topics. Topics are split into partitions. Partitions are distributed across brokers. Consumers read the data back in parallel through consumer groups. This design is what makes Kafka high throughput, low latency, fault tolerant, and horizontally scalable. This is the complete and up-to-date explanation of Kafka architecture.